Hello and welcome back. In this lesson, I will teach you how to apply subject verb agreement rules correctly in tricky situations. These situations involve prepositional phrases or relative clauses that occur between the subject and the verb in a sentence. I'll show you how to identify the subject in situations like this so that you can avoid making the most common mistakes. As always, there is a quiz later on to test your understanding. So let's start. If you want to learn the basic rules of subject verb agreement, watch lesson number one in this series, which is an introduction to this topic. You will find a link in the description. But to quickly recap the basics, here's a chart from the previous lesson. With singular nouns, such as monkey, boy, car, and so on, and with the pronouns he, she, and it, we add s to the verb in the present tense. Monkey eats, boy walks, he goes, she speaks, etc. With plural nouns, and with the pronouns I, you, we, and they, we don't add s to the verb. Now, I and you are not plural pronouns. It's just a rule that with I and you, we don't add s to the verb. These two rules work with all verbs except for be. The verb be has five forms. We say I am, he, she, it, or any singular noun is, and you, we, they, or any plural noun are. This is in the present tense. In the past tense, we say I, he, she, it, or any singular noun was, and you, we, they, or any plural noun were. These are the very basic rules of subject verb agreement. So now, let's discuss some more advanced topics. Let's start with prepositional phrases. Here's an example. I want you to do this as an exercise. You see, there are two places where you have to choose between is and are. The cookies is for Amanda, or the cookies are for Amanda. And the box of chocolates is for Tom, or are for Tom. What do you think? Well, here's the answer. The cookies are for Amanda, and the box of chocolates is for Tom. But how come? Cookies is a plural noun, and chocolates is also plural. Yet, we have are in the first place and is in the second. So, what's going on here? Well, with cookies, it's easy. Plural subject, so we say are. But in the second sentence, we have box of chocolates. Here, we see a preposition of, and we see that it has an object, chocolates. So, of chocolates is a prepositional phrase. This phrase gives information about the box. It tells us what type of box it is. It's a box which has chocolates inside. So the real subject of this sentence is the box. This is a singular noun. That's why we have is. The prepositional phrase is just extra information. So you can mentally block it out. Now it's easy. The cookies are for Amanda. The box is for Tom. What box? The box of chocolates. Here's another example. A wallet with four credit cards was or were found lying in the grass. Which is correct? Pause the video and think about it for a moment. Okay, did you identify the prepositional phrase in this sentence? The phrase is with four credit cards. So what thing had four credit cards inside? It was the wallet. So wallet is the subject of the sentence. The credit cards are not the subject. Wallet is a singular noun, so a wallet with four credit cards was found lying in the grass. If the sentence was just about credit cards, we might say four credit cards were found lying in the grass. But here, since the real subject is wallet, we say was. Okay, here's the next one. Some students in my class speak or speaks French as their first language. Well, what's the subject of this sentence? I see a preposition in, so I know that in my class is a prepositional phrase. It gives us information about the noun students. So the subject here is students. This is a plural noun, so we need a plural verb. That is a verb without s added to the end. So some students in my class 
speak French as their first language. Even though the noun class is right next to the verb, it's part of the prepositional phrase. The real subject is the plural word students. Here's one last example. Small business owners throughout the state have or has voiced their displeasure with the government's new tax proposal. Okay, let me explain this one a little bit. Small business owners means people who own shops, restaurants, or other companies that are small. Throughout the state means not just in one place, but in every place across the state. To voice your displeasure is a common expression. It means you're not happy with something. Displeasure is the opposite of pleasure. To voice your displeasure is to express your disappointment or dissatisfaction. This expression is used in more formal situations like this. A tax proposal is a tax plan that the government has announced. So many business owners are not happy with this plan, maybe because it's going to raise taxes on their businesses. Okay, so now you decide, have or has. Now, what's the subject here? Do you see a prepositional phrase? Yes, throughout the state is a prepositional phrase because throughout is a preposition. So what does this phrase give you information about? It gives you information about small business owners. This is the subject. Within the subject, the noun is owners. Because the word business just tells you what type of owner. Owners of what? Owners of business. What type of business? Small business. So the real subject is the word owners, which is a plural noun. So we need a plural verb without S. So small business owners throughout the state have voiced their displeasure with the government's new tax proposal. Did you get it right? Okay, now the important question is, how do we identify prepositional phrases? Well, the first step is to know the most common prepositions in English. These are words like of, in, on, at, by, with, to, for, from, etc. You see some of these on the screen. Of course, there are many more. When you see a preposition in a sentence, it will always be part of a phrase that is a group of words of chocolates, with four credit cards, in my class, throughout the state, and so on. If such a phrase occurs before the verb in a sentence, it will act just like an adjective to give information about a noun. So identify that noun, like box, wallet, students, owners, etc. If the noun is singular, then add S to the verb. If the noun is plural, then don't add an S to the verb. If the verb is be, then choose the correct form, am, is, are, was, or were. Now just like prepositional phrases, Relative clauses can also cause problems with subject-verb agreement. Take this example. This vintage watch, which I received as a wedding gift from my grandparents, is or are one of my most prized possessions. Let me explain the vocabulary here. A vintage object is an old object that's attractive or of high quality, like vintage furniture, vintage cars, etc. So a vintage watch is an attractive old watch that's still in good condition. The word possession means something you own, and a prized possession is a thing that's very important to you. All right, what do you think is or are here? Okay, look at the clause, which I received as a wedding gift from my grandparents. What is the purpose of that clause? What did I get as a wedding gift from grandma and grandpa? I received the watch, the vintage watch. So this clause only gives information about the watch. It gives you some details about it. So in fact, this whole clause acts like an adjective. For this reason, it's called an adjective clause. More commonly, it's referred to as a relative clause. So that means the real subject is watch. Grandparents is not the subject. The word watch is a singular noun, so this vintage watch, which I received as a wedding gift from my grandparents, is one of my most prized possessions. The verb is agrees with the subject watch. Relative clauses usually start with words like who, which, that, where, or when. These words are called relative pronouns. Alright, here's another example. 
The architect who designed some of the city's biggest skyscrapers live or lives in a modest two-bedroom apartment downtown. Modest means simple. So is it live or lives? The first thing that you should notice is the word who. So you know that we have a relative clause. Who designed some of the city's biggest skyscrapers is the relative clause. It tells us something about the architect. So architect is the subject here. Skyscrapers is not the subject. Architect is a singular noun. So the architect who designed some of the city's biggest skyscrapers lives in a modest two-bedroom apartment downtown. Next one. The only books that I actually enjoyed reading when I was a kid was or were superhero comics. Stop the video and think about this one. Okay, first of all, did you find the relative clause? Actually, there are two relative clauses here. The first one is that I actually enjoyed reading and the second is when I was a kid. The first clause tells us about the books. I'm talking about books that I enjoyed reading. And the second clause says that we're not talking about now, we're talking about the period when I was a child in the past. You can have two relative clauses like this that give different types of information. But of course the subject here is books. This is a plural noun. So the only books that I actually enjoyed reading when I was a kid were superhero comics. This might sound a little strange to you because we have the word kid, which is singular. So we feel like the, the verb should be was. Because in conversation, we normally say the kid was running, the kid was playing, and so on. But the important thing is that kid is not the subject here. It's just part of that relative clause. The verb should agree with the subject of the sentence, which is books in this case. One last example, prescription drugs which cannot simply be obtained over the counter, require or requires a doctor's prescription in order to be purchased. The sentence means that there are certain medicines that if you want to buy them, you have to get a doctor's prescription. Over the counter means going to the store and buying something just like that. You pay money over the counter and you receive the product over the counter. You cannot do that with prescription drugs. You need a doctor's prescription. So what do you think? Require or requires? Okay, where's the relative clause here? The relative clause is which cannot simply be obtained over the counter. And that clause gives information about prescription drugs. That's a plural noun, so we don't add S to the verb. Prescription drugs, which cannot simply be obtained over the counter, require a doctor's prescription in order to be purchased. So looking at all of these sentences, how do we identify relative clauses? Well, watch out for the relative pronouns who, which, that, where, when, etc. Once you identify a relative clause, check to see whether that clause comes between the subject and the verb. If it does, just ignore the clause. Look at the subject and decide whether it is singular or plural and then use the correct form of the verb based on that. Now if you want to know why two sentences here have commas and two sentences don't have commas, then see my lesson on punctuation where I explain all about it. I'll leave a link in the description below. All right, if you're ready, it's now time for the quiz. All right, I have 10 sentences for us to practice with. We'll do the first four now and then we'll move on to the next set. All right, in each of these sentences, I want you to choose the correct verb form from the two options that are given. Um, pause the video, take a moment to think about these sentences, then play the video and continue. All right, in number one, athletes from over 200 countries compete or competes in the Olympics. We have a prepositional phrase here. So what's the preposition? The preposition is from. So from over 200 countries is the prepositional phrase. This tells us about the athletes. So the subject is athletes. This is a plural noun. So athletes from over 200 countries compete in the Olympics. And number two, the prepositional phrase here is with blue eyes. And this phrase tells you about the puppy. So that puppy with blue eyes 
is the cutest little animal I have ever seen. Puppy is singular, so is the correct verb form. In number three, we have a relative clause. Remember that relative clauses start with words like who, which, that, and so on. Here we have that. So that affect the heart is the relative clause. So that means the subject is diseases. The relative clause is telling you what kind of disease we're talking about. So diseases is a plural noun. Diseases that affect the heart are called cardiovascular diseases. Number four is a little tricky because what we have here is a relative clause. It starts from the word standing. Standing at the counter is the relative clause. Now you might be thinking, well, there's no relative pronoun like who, which, or that. That's because it's hidden here. This is basically that guy who is standing at the counter. In a lot of places, the relative pronoun and the verb that comes right after that will be dropped like this. And uh, when the clause starts with an ing verb like you have here, like standing, it's called a participle clause. It's basically just a reduced relative clause, but it's still a relative clause. So then that means that the subject here is that guy. That guy is a singular noun. That guy standing at the counter looks like a bodybuilder. All right, here are the next three sentences. We're going up in difficulty a little bit here. Stop the video, think about them, then play the video again and continue. All right, number five, a documentary about the possibility of aliens from outer space visiting Earth in the 21st century was or were awarded a special prize at the film festival. Now, the reason this uh, sentence looks confusing is actually because there's one big preposition phrase here. We see a number of prepositions uh, in this sentence, about, of, from, and in. But if you start reading from the first preposition about the possibility of aliens from outer space visiting Earth in the 21st century, you realize this whole phrase just tells you the topic of the documentary. So the subject is documentary here, which is a singular noun. So the correct verb form is was. So a documentary about the possibility of aliens from outer space visiting Earth in the 21st century was awarded a special prize at the film festival. In number six, there are two places where you have to choose the correct verb form, but both verbs relate to the same subject. The sentence starts with emails, and then we see the word blocked. This is actually a relative clause. The sentence is trying to say emails that are blocked by the spam filter. But the words that are are left out, so this is a reduced relative clause. That means the subject is emails, which is a plural noun. So emails blocked by the spam filter don't show up in your inbox, but those emails are instead moved to the spam folder. In number seven, there are three verbs, but this one should be easier because there's uh, just a straightforward prepositional phrase starting with in. So in this neighborhood is a preposition phrase, which means that the subject is the plural word kids. Most kids in this neighborhood walk or bicycle to school, but don't spend much time doing other physical activities such as playing sport. All right, here are the last three. Stop the video, think about them, then play the video again and continue. All right, number eight, a language learner's ability. And then we see the word to, which means this is the start of a prepositional phrase. And this phrase is going to tell you about the ability. So a language learner's ability to comprehend, comprehend means to understand, difficult real world reading material meant for native speakers. That's a relative clause. So reading material, which is meant for native speakers. Now, even though this is a relative clause, it doesn't tell you anything about the subject of the sentence. This relative clause gives you information about reading material. So this clause is actually within the prepositional phrase. So the phrase starts at two and it goes all the way up to native speakers. This whole phrase 
gives you information about ability, which is the subject of the sentence. This is a singular noun, so the right verb form is increases, increases with regular and sustained practice. Sustained means you keep doing it. Okay, in number nine, we have the longest sentence in the quiz. Sheila said that Julian's negative remarks about her appearance. About is a preposition. So about her appearance is a prepositional phrase. And then we see the word which. That means it's a relative clause. Which he made at the meeting in the presence of several board members. So we've seen a prepositional phrase with about her appearance and then a long relative clause. All of this is about the noun remarks. Remarks is a plural noun. So were offensive and completely unacceptable. And finally, we come to number 10. I find it strangely amusing. Now, amusing means funny. So strangely amusing means funny in a strange or in a weird way. I find it strangely amusing that Matt and Kylie, neither of whom, now, whom is a relative pronoun. So, from neither, we see the start of a relative clause. Don't worry about the correct verb form within the clause for now. We'll come back to that. So, neither of whom have or has any baking experience whatsoever. The relative clause ends here. So, that means the subject of the sentence is Matt and Kylie. This is a plural subject because Matt and Kylie are two people. So Matt and Kylie have agreed to bake a cake for the party. All right. Now, as for the verb form within the relative clause, we have to apply subject verb agreement rules within the clause itself. So the subject of this clause is the word neither. This is considered a singular pronoun in English because it's like saying not Matt or Kylie. So neither of whom has any baking experience whatsoever. I'll read the whole sentence once again. I find it strangely amusing that Matt and Kylie, neither of whom has any baking experience whatsoever, have agreed to bake a cake for the party. If you didn't get this last one right, that's okay. I made it difficult just to show you how subject verb agreement difficulties can appear in unexpected places. All right, how many of these 10 sentences did you get right? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this lesson, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel to get my latest lessons right here on YouTube. And I will see you in another lesson soon.